these uh, little shoes down here, and that reminds me of the season that's coming. But they also uh, make me think of a small child standing for the first time, and his father before him holding out his arms, saying, you know, coaxing him to come and take the love, the uh, comfort, the protection that he offers. But you know, we also have a Heavenly Father who also offers us that comfort, that protection, and love, but also something else, eternal life. But we can only get that if we believe. Believe in God. You know, some people say that the universe is eternal, that we evolved, we come from amoebas. Most scientists now believe that the world and the universe was uh, come about because of the Big Bang. But my question is, where did all that energy and material for the Big Bang come from? There are some, if I get this word right, cosmologists, people that believe in the heavens, uh, or study them, say that that material can come from what they call quantum uncertainty. That means that energy can come from nowhere. We don't believe that. We know where energy came from. It came from God. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. This pencil had a beginning. Somebody made it. Genesis 1.26 said, When God said, then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. We know we didn't evolve from amoebas. You know, an amoeba is a one-cell organism. But it has a design. It has DNA. This pencil's got a design. It's got graphite, soft graphite in the center, ground to a point, with given strength by the wood around it. This one's got a little bit of a uh, flat surfaces that keep it from rolling off the desk unless you put it up here. And since none of us are perfect, it's got an eraser. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a design. All living creatures are made up of DNA. And DNA is like a spiral ladder of molecules that determine what we are. Now stretched out, one cell, one, the uh, DNA in one cell would reach about two feet long. And we're told that we have between 28 trillion to 36 trillion cells in our body. Each cell has the same DNA, but the molecules in that body work differently to give us eyesight or heart or lungs, but you know if that you stretched out all the DA on our bodies, it would make about 60 trips to the sun and back. Mm -hmm. Now that really took a mind-boggling designer. <coughs> Pencil also has a purpose. It's a compact instrument for writing, communicating. How many people have you heard say, I wonder why I'm here? Now, I'm not talking about walking into a room and wondering why you're there. I do that all the time. But I'm talking about why you're here. What's your purpose? You know, Ephesians 2 says that we are his workmanship, created in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And in Corinthians 6.20, it says, For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. So we're going to glorify God through good works while keeping His commandments. Many think that there's no God, or there are many gods. James says, you believe there is one God? You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. And then those are say that we all can become God. That lie has been 
coming since the Garden of Eden, when the serpent said, For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. But we can't become gods. Isaiah told us that you are my witness, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, nor shall there be after me. And further along in four, uh, chapter 44, he says, Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. God gave us the freedom of choice to have everlasting life or not. Within each of us, we know that. We just may not admit it to ourselves. But we're, but we're in this world a short time, but we'll spend eternity someplace else. Will it be hell or heaven? In Psalms we find that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. But there's hope in Matthew. It says, again the kingdom of heaven was like treasure hidden in the field which man found and hid for the joy over if he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. I ask, would you sell all you have for the kingdom of heaven? Others say that, yes, there's God, he made us, but he's left us. He's moved on to other things. In the Old Testament, men spoke with God. Adam, Abraham, Moses, then God was silent for 400 years. Then, uh, now he's been silent for about 2,000 years. Are we like Jesus on the cross crying, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, there's times when God is silent. This may be because we aren't ready for his message. Or maybe we have to go through trials to know what he's going to say. Or maybe he just knows that we won't listen. But it's not him who has forsaken us. It's we who have forsaken him. James says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. But how do you do that? Start by praying and reading the Bible consistently. And after that, stop. Listen. No TV, no music, just no interruptions, just be quiet. God will speak to you. We've got to believe in the Bible. You know, we know God's with us because we have his word. Guinness says that the Bible is the best-selling book of all times. In Hebrews it says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible, the Word of God, is a measuring stick, which Jesus is going to use at the judgment. But what is the Bible? You know, according uh, to Webster, it says that the meaning comes from Latin meaning little book. Or some people say it's scripture, which means writings. People say, you can't believe the Bible, it's unreliable, containing myths, fables, and errors. That it was hand copied by scribes in poor light, using candles, using quill pens and ground charcoal mixed with gum and water on rough papyrus and vellum. So it's got to be full of mistakes. And it's true, between the 5th and 10th century, Mesorites, Jewish scribes, copied the, the scriptures in just that way. And they were considered the oldest uh, forms until the Dead Sea Scrolls were uh, discovered, and they were written about 200 B.C. Now studies concluded that the two are almost are identical 95% of the time, with the remaining 5% being just minor spelling variations. Now as we 
examine the Bible here a little bit. I want you to remember this little ditty. 512, 5512, 41, 21, 1. 512, 5512, 4-1, The Old Testament was written in Hebrew and Aramaic, contained 39 books. Five books, the Pentateuch, or the books of Moses, history, poetry, major prophets, and minor prophets. So the Old Testament describes the creation of the universe and us, by God, how sin entered the world, genealogy of all peoples, God's law, history of his chosen people, poetry to soothe the soul, and prophecy, or what I call truth or consequences. God sent his prophets to tell us the truth, and those that did not believe suffered the consequences. It said that the Old Testament doesn't apply today. But nothing could be further than the truth. Paul told Timothy, All scripture is given by, spirit, the, by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine and reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that, God, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Those words are relevant today, just today as they were back then. And Isaiah said that the grass withers, the flower fades, but the Word of God stands forever. The Old Testament's lasted 3,000 years. And the, one of the main reasons is that it hints of the coming Messiah. From the beginning in Genesis where God said, I will put Ebony between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. All the way to Malachi. It said, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the convent, in who you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But what about the New Testament? 27 books, 4 1, 21 1. Four Gospels, the history in Acts, 21 letters and one book of prophecy. The, Bible, the New Testament was written approximately 35 to 65 years after the death of Jesus. But more importantly, the four Gospels are eyewitness accounts of Jesus' life. From Matthew, who left a lucrative job to follow Jesus. Mark, who wrote the testimony of Peter. Luke, who was Paul's personal physician whose written and oral sources were gathered from eyewitness accounts and from Apostle John. Acts tells of the beginning of the church, its persecution, as it is, was then and as it is now. There's thir 13 letters. 13 are attributed to Paul, a Christian persecuting Pharisee who had his own supernatural experience with our Savior. Two by Jesus' brothers, James and Jude, and five by the apostles, Peter and John. Now the author of the uh, book of Hebrews is highly debated, but a lot of people contributed to Paul also. Revelation of Jesus Christ is a prophecy telling us of the things that will happen at the end of the world. It's the only book of the Bible that hasn't taken place, but it will, because all other uh, prophecy of the Bible has. Peter says, knowing this first, that the, no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The best news of all is that we know that it also foretells the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, one who you must believe. There's no denying that Jesus lived because there's many documents that attest to him outside the Bible. Josephus, a Jewish historian, wrote, At this time there was a wise man who was called Jesus. His conduct was good and he was known to be virtuous. And many people from the, among the Jews and the other nations became his disciples. Pilate 
sentenced him to be crucified and die. But those who become his disciples did not abandon his discipleship. They reported that he appeared to them three days after his crucifixion, and that he was alive. And then Tacitus, who was a Roman historian, affirmed numerous details about Jesus' life, including his history, his death under Pontius Pilate, and his and the persecution of his disciples. Furthermore, by describing the mysterious superstition, he may have been uh, thinking of the uh, resurrection. Unbelievers say that Jesus existed, but he was not God's son. He wasn't God, and he certainly did not rise from the dead. But God himself told us that Jesus was his son, Matthew said that when Jesus stepped out of the water after being baptized by John, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And Mark reported that at the transformation on the mound of Jesus, and a shadow came over and a cloud came overshadowed them, and a voice came from out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. But was Jesus God? He never really said he was God. But he did say, I and my Father are one. And I am equal with the Father. He also said that he had the authority to judge nations and to forgive sins. Things only God can do. He said he had the power to answer prayers and that he will be with his followers forever. Now, claiming something doesn't make it true. But Jesus did a lot, uh, including fulfilling prophecy, performing miracles, which defied the laws of nature. Some of the miracles that Jesus did was turn water into wine. He healed the sick, the deaf and dumb, the blind and crippled, cured leprosy, drove out demons, provided miraculous fish catches. I need to go fishing with him. Uh, he raised the dead, walked on water, calmed the stormy seas, twice fed thousands with a few fish, produced a temple tax out of a fish's mouth, and withered a fish tree. But you know, the greatest miracle of all was that he willingly went to the cross, shed his blood, and died for a sinner like me. Amen. Timothy uh, 3.16 says that without controversy, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in the glory. In Hebrews 4.15 we find that he was tempted as we are, but yet he lived a sinless life. However, the ultimate proof to his divinity was his resurrection. This was witnessed by 500 people over 40 days. Paul said in Corinthians 15, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James, then by the, all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as one of the, as one born out of due time. Jesus is the one that gives eternal life. He told Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father through me. We must believe in the Holy Spirit. Before Jesus died, he told us that the Holy Spirit would come. John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. A few years ago, I was about 12 to 14. A few decades ago. No, just a few years ago. I, I attended a church service uh, 
And at the end of the service, they gave the invitation to come forward. And this lady came up to me and asked me if I wanted to accept Jesus as my Savior. Well, I got the feeling that she was not, a get, not going to give in until I did. <coughs> so I thought, I'm just going to go through the motions. So I went forward, and I knelt down. And as I did, I knew that I wanted Jesus to be my Savior. And I prayed to him. And at that very instant, a warm shiver went through my entire body, from head to toe. I didn't know what was going on. It scared the devil out of me. <laughs> I've never been the same. But, you know, my life was changed from that time on. That first step to, step to comfort, protection, and love and eternal life that God offers can only be taken if we firmly believe in Him, His Word, and His Son Jesus as our Savior. Let us pray. Lord God, You are our Heavenly Father, and we are Your children. You make us to, and provide for us in every way. You shower us with Your grace and are merciful to us. You love us so much You sent Your only begotten Son to us that he might die as a perfect sacrifice for our, and for the forgiveness of our sins. For this we give you all the glory. In the name of our Savior Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. If you truly believe that eternal life God offers can only be had by accepting Jesus as our Savior, and you have not done so, I invite you to come forward as we sing 312 softly and tenderly. Thank you.